Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And of course, uh, we have breaking news once again. Putin coming out and again threatening the use of nuclear weapons if the Crimean Bridge is struck by U.S. or NATO forces. And uh, he's not, uh, you know, seemingly not bluffing in his remarks there. But uh, the White House uh, State Department, they don't seem, they seem to think it's just all a bluff and just another uh, lot of rhetoric. According to the uh, news.ligia.net, said Russia has no intention of using nuclear weapons despite dictator Vladimir Putin's recent threats against NATO, announced the State Department spokesman Matthew Miller at a briefing. Such rhetoric is irresponsible, he goes on to note, and inappropriate for a nuclear power and is inconsistent with the way that any nuclear power should talk about the use of such weapons in public. Uh, he also said, and I would just note, as I always note, as the president has made clear, we are not sending boots on the ground to Ukraine. Well, you're right. He's not sending boots to ground, uh, on the ground in Ukraine. They already did. We've had that in there for, for quite some time already. In fact, uh, <laughs> boy, it's just crazy. We'll go into that in just a moment, though. But anyway, uh, also the Business Insider is reporting that Putin is rehearsing, uh, rehashing his nuclear threats, but this time he may be threatening nuclear catastrophe in an effort to sway American voters. That's another uh, possible and plausible idea. Uh, said uh, Vladimir Putin made explicit nuclear threat against the West this week, but experts remain skeptical of Putin's nuclear saber-rattling after three years of similar threats. One expert suggests Putin is drumming up fear among American voters to cut U.S. support for Ukraine. And, and of course, that may be very well true as well, but if you remember, those those of you that uh, have followed our Twitter, excuse me, not our Twitter, but our um Patreon uh, videos there, we've released a lot of intel right from the Joint Chiefs of Staff, their war games. There are potential threats of uh, Russia using nuclear weapons according to the different war game scenarios that have been run, including that against Germany and even the UK. Uh, but in these threats here, Putin has done it right directly to the mainland United States. Well, you know, with the idea of the the vote issue there, I saw this particular from Chris Collings uh, on, um, what's this on? Is this on Twitter, TikTok? I don't know what it's on, actually. Anyway, uh, he posted this here. Uh, Bragan Putin warns U.S. Biden destroying you in the Tucker interview there. Uh, let's listen to this uh, little one-minute clip here where he speaks about that. Some pretty incredible news coming out in a historic interview yesterday between Tucker Carlson and current president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Now, in this interview, Vladimir Putin warns the United States that your U.S. dollar is in trouble. President Joe Biden, your current president, is destroying your nation. You've got $34 trillion worth of debt. You're sending money out overseas. Your borders are open. You have internal struggles. And he said, and President Joe Biden isn't even calling the shots for the nation. He's actually taking orders. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you actually agree? Isn't that interesting? Uh, he's not calling the shots. He's taking orders. Those of you that recall on one of our, uh, excuse me, our yeah, Patreon posts there, I uh, shared with you how that uh, he spends a lot of time on the phone with Hillary Clinton. So we know who does a lot of the advising uh, on, on the ground, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, at the, at the, on ground zero at the White House, I should say. Uh, RT reporting another Abrams tank has been destroyed in the Donbass region. Of course, Russia has said uh, what they have discovered about the Abrams tanks is that the U.S. has stripped all of its technology out of it basically giving the Ukrainians just a tin can to ride around in for Russia to do target practice on. Uh, anyway, said a duel, uh, the duel between the T-72B3 uh, and the U.S. supplied armor occurred not far from uh, Ad Advika, the Russian Defense Ministry has said, has destroyed another M1 Abrams tank sent to Ukraine by the U.S. and Russia Donbass. Defense Ministry in Moscow has said it is the third vehicle of the type to be knocked out by Russia in recent days. In a statement on Wednesday, the ministry said the Abrams had been taken out during the uh, fight near the city of Advik, Ad, excuse me, Advika, which was recently liberated by Russian troops. The tank was knocked out in one shot by the crew of the T-72B3. Officials said they added that Kiev had also lost 460 members 
as well as another tank, four fighting infantry vehicles, two armored and five ordinary vehicles, and a Buck Mobile Air Defense Missile System in the area there. You know, it's, it's really sad because uh, what's happened in Ukraine is exactly what Edouard Hudeau said, um, you know, who's the former mayor of uh, uh, Kharkiv, and he said, quoting from the Chabad organization's leader at that time, back in the 90s, that they would pit Russia and Ukraine against one another. Russia claiming to take back part of its territory, Ukraine fighting off the Russians, but, it, but the ultimate goal would be to take out as many Slavic people as they possibly can on both sides of the fence. And it seems that they're achieving exactly that there. Elon Musk says that Biden... Um, Gosh, I hate it when these commercials get in the way there. Uh, Biden is flying 320,000 unvetted migrants into the U.S. sets the stage for something far worse than 9-11, uh, something that he was speaking about on here on, on his Twitter account there. said, just a matter of time that the U.S. faces another terrorist attack of that magnitude or worse. He's talking about 9-11. He uh, said, so this is why, uh, why groups on the far left are fight so hard to stop voter ID requirements under the uh, absurd guise of protecting the right to vote. The billionaire Tesla CEO said in a subsequent post that doubled down on his stance there. You know, and of course, speaking about the fact that the basically, you know, flying in voters, I guess would be a good way to put that there. Going back to, um, um, uh, actually not that one there, but uh, Tennessee uh, Senator uh, Katie Britt, and where she is wanting to uh, present a, a bill and in, in, in before the Senate there to actually change that law on on the voting status there. Let's listen in just for briefly Biden, on that. Every state has become a border state. We must seal and secure the border. We must create uh, we must create an opportunity for safe communities. And so we're going to work hard, uh, no matter who's in the Senate, to achieve that goal. I know it has been a long year for you. You had a tough. Anyway, um, it's kind of interesting, too. Newt Gingrich uh, kind of weighed in, uh, um, weighed in on, on Katie Britt and what she's doing right now and uh, her, her, her rebuttal to the, uh, to the State of the Union and an audition, as he calls it, for the Trump VP, uh, VP list. So that's the way Newt Gingrich sees the, uh, he's a former House Speaker, uh, you know, of the U.S. Senate, but that's what he believes, or excuse me, House Speaker, not Senate, but uh, that's what he feels that Katie Britt is actually doing, that she is actually trying to get on uh, Donald Trump's uh, VP list. Uh, I don't think that that's going to happen, but you never know, though. Uh, Trump, Trump is no doubt going to look for a secure candidate on his VP list that will just absolutely obliterate both sides and possibly someone that would appeal to uh, also uh, the Democratic side there. So I'm wondering if Kennedy may not end up being his choice uh, if Kennedy were to agree to do so. And Kennedy may very well. You just never know there. Anyway, Nashville, Tennessee will deploy two waves of National Guard uh, troops to the Texas-Mexico border through the spring as Republican governors across the country back Texas and its ongoing feud with the federal authorities over immigration enforcement. Governor Bill Lee met with deploying National Guard members in uh, Millington, Tennessee on Saturday, weeks after the governor traveled to the border and pledged to support Texas Governor Greg Abbott with an escalating and increasingly public, uh, politicized border crisis. Abbott has been backed by almost all U.S. Republican governors who signed a statement in January saying Texas has the constitutional right to defend itself. Uh, anyway, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we thank you for listening and your support of this broadcast. Good day.